This video is sponsored by One Football. One Football's app lets you keep up to date with all the scores, news, and stats in football. So download it in the link in the description below, and uh, let us know what you think of it, how you find it, and uh, enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. This video is sponsored by One Football. One Football's app lets you keep up to date with all the scores, news, and stats in football so download it in the link in the description below and uh, let us know what you think of it how you find it and uh, enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> i knew that was coming i mean i see i see spurs you know, fans spurs fans last night uh, with their banners they're going to tramia on a friday night mm. no trains no trains it's pathetic but bt sport don't care <laughs> All they care about is they've got a 7-0 victory. But Spurs fans have got to go all the way. I'm not just saying it because it's Spurs, but any sort of fans have got to go all the way up to Tramia on a Friday night. They've got to take time off of work. Mm -hmm. Half seven. Like they could have put, Surely there was a, if you look around the FA Cup third round, surely there was more of a local derby that they could have put on a Friday night. Of course. Mm -hmm. and, and, that's it, that, and that's the thing, like you said, it's the TV what they, company's not worrying about I think, I think what they need to do, I think the way forward... Unless it was Millwall way out of Middlesbrough. The way forward right for TV companies, the way to, to, to get round it is... They need to scrap the rule where they can't show it at 3 p.m. on a Saturday, because. See, I don't, I don't understand why that rule is is there anymore. Well, they're, no, they're I don't terrified know. fans won't go to the game. No, they're not terrified, but, but they need to sort of scrap that sort of rule because watching a Liverpool Man City like for, it was Thursday night for fuck's sake. Do you know what I mean? What, and I know what? it was a midweek fixture, but do you want like Liverpool have got to come here on a Monday night? Yeah, like, and I've I've moaned so much about. You know, going up to like we've got to go up to we've got to go Man City, Man City on, Tuesday, on, a Tuesday, on a Tuesday on a Tuesday night and Brighton Wolves on a Friday Tuesday night. night and I don't think we'll go to City on a Tuesday. And I understand if they if they sort of like um fall in a midweek fixture thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes it can't be helped. But like changing a three o'clock kick off from a Saturday to a Monday night eight o'clock, they've got to come all the way down, as as he said, right? They kick off eight PM by the time we finish the game, they get back to Houston. There's no fucking train going back. Yeah, there. but it also it depends. Like, on hold on, hold on, hold on. There's no train going back there at that time, no. so they're more likely to have to stay over. Then they're going to have to stay another night away from home. More money. Uh, more, yeah, more money. It could cost them that. At the end of the day, if it was at three o'clock on a Saturday and they just said, "Right, we're, we're going to show the West Ham Liverpool game three o'clock on a Saturday," everyone's all right. Yeah, yeah I know that. that but game on Saturday, yes. Without, without the TV money. But there is no 8 PM, is there? eight pm on Monday night should be down to local derbies and, and, they know. and distance. Well, it's also they, the success they, of the other clubs. If Liverpool play on a Monday night, it's because they've progressed in the Champions League and things like that. So they have to but, move but, these but games. But not, on. Only, but not only that, what you've got to look at how the TV companies look at it is that you put men say Man City Liverpool was a Monday night game. You put that on. You're gonna get other fans watching it. Of course, yeah. And that's, yeah well, that's why they don't do it with a three o'clock. The thing one. is, with Man City Liverpool, they won't Liverpool. do it at three o'clock because yeah, West Man City Liverpool fans are not gonna sit here and watch TV. No, no, no. Yeah, but that's no. But what I'm saying is, they're not gonna put a big game like that on a on the Saturday three o'clock kickoff and put it on the telly. No, I understand. Because then they're not, they're not gonna get the neutral supporters watching it. Yeah, and that's course, all they care listen, about. But if, if the Premier no, League is worldwide, look, Scott, exactly. There's there's a there's got to be all right. So there's two billion Premier League fans, yeah. Two billion Premier League fans. Only about a million of them can fit in the grounds around the oh, country. Look, so you've got totally one point nine nine billion people. But, but you're, it's not only the Premier League fans. You're looking at every other club. You know, that, that's, yeah. that's, that, that, that's right. so how many it. how many people fit in the but, grounds around this country? No, no but no, what no, he's no, saying is, no, what he's saying is, it don't matter what level. Of, it's like it. it don't matter if you supported Rochdale, you still want to go home and watch Man City Liverpool because yeah. you're yeah, a football fan. Ninety two grounds around the country divided by an average of. 25,000. But they don't think of it like that. They think of it, they want everyone watching that game. Yeah. That's what Christmas is about, though. Yeah, it's, it, it was terrible. But uh, loads of football to talk about, mate. Obviously, we haven't been in since the New Year. To all the listeners, hope you had a great Christmas and a happy New Year. But we've got loads to go through today, mate, because um, there's been a few things happened since we've left. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Mourinho's gone. Tottenham, <sighs> Tottenham almost thought they won the league. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, was, I was looking no, at look, um, look. Uh, It was like a revolving door. They yeah. ended and exited <laughs> in the same swoop. Banter aside, they're still in the title race. Listen, mate, I would kill to be in their position. Yeah, I tell Man, you. Man City opened it up last week when they beat Liverpool, but that's been a busy Christmas for West Ham. I think a record month for points for us in the Premier League. What, 15. A, what a great month. Yeah. And we, we, uh, look, we sat here after, um, after a, a, the win at, was it Fulham? Fulham, yeah. And we were saying, like, if we can get another two or three wins. Look, we lost a couple, evidently. 
we drew one the other day, but we had a great month. I think it was one of the greatest months of football I think I'll remember. Yeah, it was, it was definitely enjoyable. I mean, what did we play? Eight, one, five, lost two, drew, drew one. And who did we lose to? Burnley and Watford at home. Well, yeah. Burnley away, Watford at home. Brighton could have gone either way, but it was the start of the month, wasn't it? The four wins in a row. Newcastle yeah. away, Cardiff at home, Palace at home, and then Fulham away. It was massive. Yeah, it was, it was big, mate. But yeah, we had a great month. And look, them results. Christmas them five, come early at West Ham. Them, them 15 points, mate, have done us a right favour, haven't they? Yeah, so. they pushed us right up the table. And um, yeah, we sit comfortably in what? 10th place? We still in 10th? Yeah, yeah we're got, still we, in 10th. Look, the thing is, with the Watford game and the Burnley game, we could have gone 7th. Yeah. Yeah, could, at one point we could have caught Man United before they decided to sack their manager. Yeah, massive decision that one. Yeah, you know I mean, so I didn't see that one coming. To be fair, we <laughs> said about it for the last six weeks when this yeah. show that it was going to happen, and then when it actually happened, I was more surprised. Yeah, I mean, it, it it was awful in the end, weren't it? From from him, but um, look, we'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, let's go into what should we, what do you want to go into? Yeah, let's have a little. Have a little recap. Talk about West Ham, about Pellegrini, eh? and Harry's changed there. West Ham, and we've got brought in obviously Sammy and Nasri now. Yeah. Nasri is a hammer. He's, yeah, the transfer he, window is open. He so there's probably some transfers to talk about as well. Made his debut in the FA Cup. I, I thought we played really well. To be fair, mm. he didn't look out of place. It didn't look like he ain't played for eighteen months. No. He's linking up well with our midfield, and especially Anatovic before he had to go off. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I think he'll fit in well at West Ham. He's got a big game coming up this weekend. I've seen a video that um, Robbie Arsenal Fan TV's put out about Sammy and Nasri, and so <laughs> hopefully it starts. Well, I'll, I'll have to watch it later. Yeah, it, it. it was a video that he'd done about top five, top five snakes. Arsenal on it. Yeah, players. I've seen it before. Yeah, and he was number three, and someone's done a clip of him and. He says, like, he points at the camera again, Sammy and Nasri, and he does some little Apollo Creed Rocky music, <laughs> like, punches and that, so... Oh, I've seen that. I've seen, yeah. Do you know what? He was doing, like, a... Like, when we when we started the fan channels, he, he was doing, like, a demo, and he showed us that as a demo. And he started doing, like, some boxing things. I was, like, I was turning to him, what are you doing? Yeah, no, it's... Uh, but, no, he's a great signing for West Ham, I think. It's a win-win for us, because if it works out, we get him for longer. And if it don't, we say, see you later. Yeah. We're falling short sometimes of giving players long contracts mm. when they don't work out. But, no, good luck to him. No, but, yeah, it's, it's been, a, as we say, it's been a great month for West Ham. Um it's pushed us up the table and now we can the second half of the season we can start looking up and maybe trying to clinch one of them Europa League places mm -hmm. it's not out of reach uh, I think between sixth place now I think a sixth and seventh there's a gap now in there of about eight eight points six points I don't think you like catch that. United now now United are going to go on a big run now but United are winning but they're not moving anywhere it's when when Solskjaer took over they was 19 points behind Liverpool and six and I think they're still Six and what they fifteen points, <laughs> eighteen away, points, 18 points Liverpool. behind or whatever it is now. But yeah, that, I mean, that they're not moving. It just showed you how bad they were and how bad, well, how inconsistent and how how much the the teams below them had been beating each other because you know no, no one seemed to move for ages. But um, look, look, West Ham in a good position now. Look, we we sat here at the beginning of the season. We was all worried again about. You know the, the the threat of relegation. We didn't start brilliantly. Yeah, but the first four four games, four defeats. You feel that fear the worst. You think, oh, we're in. You don't think Pellegrini's that sort of manager. You start question questioning him already, and uh, a lot of our fans did. But a lot of the fans also stuck by him and believed in him, and it's it's paid off. But you can see some of the football we play. I mean, we we are we're still inconsistent, but not as inconsistent as we was. You know what I mean? We're we're. The games we, we should have won over Christmas. Look, we sat here, I think we was two games into a winning streak. First time we'd won two games on a spin in two years, three years nearly. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. When you looked at some of the games we won, Newcastle away, we never do well there. 3 nil no. win. Uh, Southampton away is another one. We was 1-0 yeah. down, we come back. But in games you thought we could win, we didn't. So, yeah, you're right about being um, a bit inconsistent. But then four wins in a row at the beginning of December was massive for West Ham and it just it give everyone I mean the feeling around that club even when we lost at home to Watford 2-0 I remember that day and uh, yeah you're upset because you've lost but you're still in high spirits yeah because the points we've got over the month of December yeah I mean it was a good but look we, we, we went to uh, Brighton well Brighton come to us the other day um, a little bit of a mixed 
bag of 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 a performance, really, weren't it? It was uh, wasn't a great game of football. Neither team had much of the ball. No, they 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 scored. The first half was terrible. Burnley away was bad. I thought, but then Brighton at home weren't that great. First half, but second half it just it, it lit up into life. Yeah, yeah it's, it lit up, and they they went two nil. 2-0 up and I thought oh here we go last season they beat us 3-0 there but they scored two goals against the runner play it was just two it was um, Diop any, Diop especially for the second goal if anything I'll say about well, the, the thing about the December period as well you always get a um, a sort of uh, like a massive run of games you? You, you play about 8 or 9 games in December which is always going to be tough but the injuries we've got and the players that we've had out and we've been down, using an old phrase from Harry Redknapp, down to the bare bones at times. I think we've done really well because I think them two goals against Brighton. If Bell Bueno's playing, I don't think they happen. To no. be honest, and and the good thing as well, what I noticed about this West Ham team under Pellegrini this season that was different from say David Moyes and the end of Billich's term. You know, there's a lot of fight even when we go one nil down. And uh, like against Southampton, there was a lot of fight there to come back, and we won two 0 down at home against Brighton with what? What was there? T- half hour to go. Yeah. Last season, the heads would have dropped, and we'd have lost that three or four nil most probably. But now there's a, there's a lot of players in the team now that want to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and and go for the win. And look, Mark Noble come on against Brighton in that second half, and he changed the game. Yeah. Completely changed the game, and he's been under a lot of criticism from most of our fans for seems like a last four years now I think but he gets unnecessary Chris. yeah he does and, and, and he's an easy target because he wears the captain's armband that's why it happened to Kevin Nolan it, it happened to Lucas Neal happened there to Nigel Real Coca there seems to be players Coker. that we have at West Ham that no matter what they do they'll always remember the bad rather than the good yeah I mean there's a bloke that sits behind us who, who don't stop slating Mark Noble non-stop but then the other day when he come on and changed the game he, he, he wouldn't praise him mm. and I, I don't like that I mean Look, I love Mark Noble. He's one of my favourite West Ham players Why do you of think all that time. Is? Why do you think people were ref- are reluctant to praise players when they do well? Because they don't want to admit they're wrong sometimes. Mm. That's what it is. It, it, you know, I, I, I've sat there on our channel and I've said about Mark Noble sometimes and I've stuck up for him. But when he's he doesn't play, play well, I'll sit there and say he hasn't played well. You just judge him on each game. But some people have just got such a vendetta against players and they just don't but rate we, them. We seem to pick, like, as a fan base, we seem to pick on the players that... We pick on our own. Yeah. That's the yeah. problem. I, I don't... Well, Kevin Nolan got the stick, but, you know, if if I've picked a West Ham team over the last 20 years, I think Kevin Nolan would be in it. Yeah, definitely. Do you know what I mean? It's... Uh, I, ju- I don't understand some of it sometimes. Sometimes I do. I do understand it if they're not... But Mark Noble don't come on that pitch and it doesn't give... 110 percent you know he always does and look he's not he's not up there with the ability of like an out of it and anderson and things like that but you know what mark noble's about mark noble's gonna come on get stuck in same as declan rice you know i see declan rice the other day give away two balls no one said anything but give it a couple of years time he's doing that yeah they'll all be on his back yeah but i suppose that's football in it that is football mate but um yeah, it was. It, I, I thought that was a decent draw against Brighton. They're a tough old team. We seem to be struggling a, a bit with physical teams, especially when Balbuena's not in the team. Yeah, definitely. You notice that um, Ogbonna, bless him. I, I do like Ogbonna, but another one, uh, another one. He's he's two or three years in. Yeah. To to his West Ham career now. Oh no, I think this is no, his fourth longer. year. It's fourth longer, year, yeah. yeah. Age catches up here. We what? buy him old. And they get older. Apparently, he's, I see today, because he, uh, he only signed a five-year deal the other year. He's got three years left on his deal, and apparently we're trying to get rid of him to a team in Italy. But he's turned around and said, no, I want to stay at West Ham and fight. And listen, if it, it, I'll, any player wants to stay at the club and fight for their place, fair play to him. Yeah, I totally agree with you, mate. I, look, I think you owe Bonner a couple of bad games, because I've seen him have some bloody good games. You know uh, what I mean? He scored the winner uh, at Wembley last season. Yeah. You know, uh, well, I've seen him have some good games. You yeah, can't really, he's, you can't he's, really a, he's a yeah, he's a he's a cup player, isn't he? Really, he loves a goal in a cup. Yeah, I mean, but he's an all-round good player. I, I, look, when someone's there and they're saying they want to fight for their place in a team, all, all, all due respect to him. Look, January transfer windows open, mate. We've already made one signing. Um, they come out today and said they might not be signing anymore until some go. 
Yeah, I mean, I see. I see you saying about Andy Carroll today. Do you know what I say about that? Poppycock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I say. <laughs> I don't know even know what that means, but sign them up. They, I remember when he said we didn't have any money before on transfer deadline day. We signed seven players, but no, I, I, I don't believe we haven't got any money. I've I've heard from a very reliable source we have got some money. Maybe the money is there, but maybe maybe it feels like the squad is okay and we don't need it, that many signings. But no, I, I, we definitely need a another midfielder, defensive midfielder. Um, a striker, definitely. Yeah. A striker. Yes, yeah, I'd say a striker. Um, well, we definitely need another right back. But Ryan Fredericks is meant to be back uh, in the next couple of weeks. There's rumours that he's back in full training next week. So I don't think we need to go out and panic. We don't need to panic by and just sign players for the sake of it because a fully fit West Ham squad. I would say we've been absolutely. Um, unlucky with injuries but it, it's not unlucky anymore is it it happens every season Saints going on yeah there's Saint going on there um, well, I, don't, I don't think the injuries are as bad this season as they have, they have been I I, I, look we've got a couple of injury prone players anyway yeah, like Jack Wilshere and stuff but you've got Yarmolenko and Sanchez that have gone down for yeah, the season yeah you but know? Yarmolenko let's be honest that was in a match and so was Sanchez it was um it was a freak injury, wasn't it? He's um, he's gone to get the ball at the back post against Chelsea, and he's just twisted. And um, yeah, yeah, things like that are unfortunate. That could happen to anyone. But they have, I, they, I think Pellegrini identified, and and some people were posting some stuff the other day. Our training grounds, one of the worst training grounds in the Premier League. Yeah, they, I know they're looking into redeveloping it <laughs> because uh, we've had people coming in in my where I work, and they've told us that West Ham are in uh, gonna. Make one, make their training ground at Russ Green one of the best in the Premier League, yeah. if not Europe. Yeah. They are going to develop it, so let's hope they do it soon. Yeah, let's hope they do. Um, I mean, another player we've been linked with. I've just seen seen I see earlier before you come in, uh, Daniel Suarez from Barcelona. Apparently, he was going to join Arsenal on loan, but West Ham, well, scammed by money. reports with twenty million pound bid. Yeah, and the thing is with that, um, it, they want the money because I think that was a stumbling block with the Arsenal deal that they uh, Arsenal are, are a little bit um, tied up with fi FFP financial fair play um, and West Ham have come in with a £20 million bid and I've, I think they prefer the money so as long as we can convince him to join us he's a, he's a good player oh yeah 100% he's, he's been in and around the squad and he got left out of the squad at the weekend the, yeah, uh, no, I'm just I'm just um, reading a text that's come here uh, from Steve K. Yeah, he was hi boys. I'm not convinced of the football we are playing this season. We have not played a decent ninety minutes all season. It just fits and starts. I think we need to sell, in my opinion, at least six to eight. What do you think? Um, I, look, I can sort of understand what he's saying now, um, but the football has been a lot better, more entertaining. I go to games now. Thinking when you've got a player like Anderson on the pitch, I know it didn't start that well for him, but when he gets the ball and he's running at defenders, you think that something's going to happen. Yeah. And I think with um, players like Anatovic now back, uh, Hernandez when he comes back, we have got it's a lot better football than what we've seen over the past, I'd say, two or three seasons without a doubt. I think, but I understand what Steve's saying. I, I, I do understand because I, you know, I've sat there and questioned it at times, but it, it takes time to break a habit do you know what I mean with with footballers as well you see that in a lot of uh, you know a lot of um, uh, teams across the country it takes time for a, a manager to put his stamp on the on the game and yeah. on the team it takes a lot of time because you know inevitably you inherit a load of players that have been taught a certain way for so long you know under Moyes and under Billich you know, I don't know what Billich was doing in the end. It, it ended up being a, a, <laughs> I don't a think farce. he knew what he was doing. No, but, it, you know, it ended up being a bit of a farce. Then Moyes come in and he, and he taught them a certain way to... He said to he not, the ship, didn't he, David Moyes? Yeah, he, he just taught them not to get beat. And and then when you get a, a manager like Pellegrini come in who wants to express and play expressive football, bring in that... Don't forget, he brought in nine players in the summer transfer window. A lot of them starters as well. It wasn't like we, you know, we've got a whole new centre-back pair. We've got a new goalkeeper. We've We've got a new centre forward. Um, we've got a new winger, two new wingers, yeah. new central midfield. More or less, it replaced the old team in, in a short space of time. But then you do get the dregs of, you know, right, you know, because no one left. 
Uh, did anyone leave? No, no, was it? No, no. One, no one, no one left. Not a first team. Not anyway. a first team player. No. So you know, a couple of went out on loan. Like um, I think Queen had left. Uh, who wasn't going to get in the team. Um, and then you got a couple gone out on loan, like uh, Cullen, Cullen, and the young kid, the, the kid that played for Fernandez. Um, they all went out on loan. So it takes a little time for him to have a look to see what he said. And if you'd have asked me this at the beginning of December, who I would I would have picked out five or six players there at the beginning of December that I said, well, right, get rid of him. He's definitely Antonio being one of them. Yeah, I was just about to say about Antonio. I mean, he's I was I was with you. If if you was to sell someone that you get pretty decent money for uh would be antonio but i, w- I wouldn't sell him now Proved i think he's worth yeah, over i think he's, he's he's he looks like he's enjoying his football again and um he, he's just he can fit in anywhere in the team and i think he's done a great job at right back why zabaleta has been out um so yeah i'll definitely keep him I'd like to unless see him. we get some silly sort of bid like 25 30 million coming for him which i don't think we will um, I'll definitely keep him because he looks like the last few games he's looked like the Antonio of old. Yeah, the I, one I that, agree. And then the other one, Andy Carroll. I mean, um, got a text in here. For, I think he's from Razors. After Carroll's two-headed saves and a goal, who's going to replace that? Which is true. You you are going to miss if Andy Carroll goal go goes. Sorry, <laughs> that's what you're going to miss if he goes. Look, <laughs> the thing is with Andy Carroll. I think Andy Carroll is a very unique player. There isn't many like him in the world anymore. How many can you think of? Glenn Murray? Yeah. Probably is is a similar player in the Premier League. Can't think of any more than him. You don't really get him uh, in foreign teams anymore. Mandzukic is, is probably like matching to him in the air. But I can't think of many more like, like him. And you do get a certain dimension from Andy Carroll with, you know... As as you say, a headed goal. Um, uh, a, a defensively, he's good, isn't he? But the thing is, right? What people? A lot of people say, like, what was his name? Razors. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, we do so well with him outside the team. You know what I mean? Like, he hasn't been in this team for a year. That like the second of of January was his first start in a whole year. Yeah. yeah? Um, we've got. And out of it, and yet he does give you a certain amount of of zip and a, a, you know a certain dimension of play, but he also takes away a whole lot more. You know what I mean? You saw that against. We'll talk about the FA Cup game in a minute, but you saw that against Birmingham. And out of it was running them ragged. I think if an out of it would have stayed on the pitch, if he hadn't got injured in that short space of time, I think we would have put two, three, four past them. Yeah. As soon as he come on, it becomes static. It become. There's no outlet there. You know what I mean? He, he's he, he's lost a yard and he's lost an inch in his jump. Now, yeah. I know he's still getting fit. I know he hasn't played a lot of football, but he doesn't look... Every time I've seen him come back in the past, he's come back with a bang. You know what I mean? He, he looks like... Maybe he's taking it easy. Maybe the manager's told him, no, don't jump into these things. And But I think manager's told him that before and I think that's just the way he is. He looks to me... I'm not going to say he's lost his hunger for football, but it just looks to me like he's lost a yard of pace. He's a, he's a bit under pressure as well, isn't he? Because he's uh, he wants that new two-year deal, and he's been told he's got to work hard. And if he's not playing, he probably thinks, "Well, how can I earn it?" And uh, after his goal on Saturday, I, I mean, I didn't see it at the time, but when I watched it on the replay, he after, really cried. Yeah, he was emotional. It's been a long time for him, and as you said, Andy Carroll is um, is a unique a unique option to have, and a fully fit Andy Carroll. Any club in the world would take a player like that. Not maybe not as a starter, but as a different option. Um, imagine if he'd have been fit all these years, what England could have done with him as well. It's it's a shame. It's a shame that the way it's working out for him. But he is important. Like he can get us a goal, and as you said, he can help defend. So it's a tough one. I mean, personally, I'd give him a two-year deal as long as he can prove his fitness and keep it up. Which is that's that's. The thing is, mate, he's sat on the sidelines for so long and we've all been waiting for him always to come back because he's been our main focal centre forward and he's never been fit. He's not a starter now for me. There's two in front of him. No, and he probably knows that as well. He, he probably that. knows I think he's not that's, a starter. I think that's why he was so emotional because he knows he does have to work hard. And yeah. if he gets another injury, 
That's his West Ham And with the done. type of players we've got in the squad now, um, like you see the difference with Nasri after when Anatovic come off. Because that first 20 minutes, Nasri, every time he got that ball, he was looking for Anatovic. He was dropping deep and they was playing a little one. Them two looked like they'd been playing together all season. Yeah. It was their first 20 minutes of football. I think that's what a quality player like Nasri brings. Yeah, exactly. He's got a football brain, hasn't he? You know what <laughs> I mean? It, it, is there more text coming through? Yeah, there's one here from... Uh, the one you know the bloke that runs the rock and roll hammers yep <laughs> I bet he's laughing at home now <laughs> question for Nicky is a cardigan acceptable to wear to football yes because he wears one as well yeah I've, I've got a very very similar one to the one you were slating the other day mate so yes I <laughs> look if it's cold mate I'll wear an imin I'll wear a sack oh, yeah. freezing hey, hang on hang on he's meant to be metalheads and he's drinking bovril at football yeah I saw him I saw See, him. Nick, you can't answer back, mate, because I'm got i on the radio. Um, <laughs> Love you, mate. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is acceptable. It is acceptable. But no, going back to Andy Carroll, it is, look, he needs to earn a deal. I think he could go out. Maybe the reaction told you, told you, told us something that's going on behind the scenes. Maybe they are saying maybe to him, they're look, trying to offload him. Yeah, I think maybe they're trying to offer him to a few people. Um, he's in the last six months of his deal. What realistically can you ask for him? Five million quid? I think it. it, it, it You'd be it, lucky to get that, really. They're, look, they're they're talking about part exchanging for John Joe Shelby. I think that'd suit all parties. He loves Newcastle. He's always loved Newcastle. He's a Geordie boy. You can't really blame him for that. John Joe Shelby's the other way. He loves West Ham. He keeps on kicking people up in the air. Unfortunately, it reminds me a little bit of Jermaine Defoe. He um he doesn't seem to be able to keep his temper, but. Maybe that's... Look, we're short in midfield. They need a centre-forward. He loves Newcastle. He loves West Ham. Get the deal done. Get the yeah, deal done. Yeah, but I said this on Saturday. Swapping a midfielder for a striker. You oh, I wouldn't do it without someone coming yeah, in. Yeah, you need like for like. Yeah. You can't get rid of someone like Andy Carroll and bring in a midfielder. And then... Because uh, who knows what's going to happen with Hernandez. There's rumours that the um, some Spanish teams are after him. I, I, I think we'd be mad to let Hernandez go in the January window. Maybe in the summer, if he wants to go. I think you're always mad to let anyone go in the January. Oh, yeah. Especially, it's unless, it's unless you've got a replacement lined up, like for like. You need to have them bought, really. You need to have them bought in January because so much can happen. You know, if you let someone go and, you know, you're midway through a season. If you let someone go and you can't get a deal done over the line by the time that 1st of February comes, well, you're, you're screwed. You look really. at last season, for example. Lucky enough, they got... We stayed up and they got relegated, but we sold on dry are you to Swansea and he didn't bring in a replacement. He, he, you know, he was like messy against us. Yeah. He won the penalty and they beat us four nil. Um, but yeah, that just shows if you leave it too late and you let someone go. I just don't want to get into that last few days and then all the rumours come out and then players start leaving and we've got no one to come in. But I don't think Pellegrini and, and to be fair, the board as well. I don't think they'll allow that to happen Look, this season. I've got four minutes. I'm going to praise the board and you do not hear that out of my mouth too often because they've gone about their business very quietly this year. Um, I've always said this, right? I've been a, a massive advocate and people will t turn around and say to me, look, people have accused me of now being in the ball's pocket. I can assure you now I'm nowhere near anyone's pocket. Um, uh, to but, be fair, you was around David Gold's house on Christmas Eve, but we'll leave that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, by the way. Um, no, but yeah, look, I've been highly critical. They're not doing anything wrong. They they got their business done. They they back the manager. They got a manager that we you know a, a big manager that we wanted. They've got into January. Still no rumblings about what's going on. They're keeping very quiet, very professional. They're getting around their business. It looks like we're trying to do business early, which is a, a minor miracle. Which we done in the summer as well. Yeah, which we done in the summer. Um, you got to give them. I've always said this, mate. I'm critical, but I'll give credit where credit's due. Yeah, you have to give them credit. credit. You have to give them credit. And um, let's hope it stays like that, that they just stay out of the way. But just quickly before we go to the, uh, I was going to say the news then, before we go to the adverts, what um, what would you rate out of 10 for the first part of the season then? We've we done this for the quarter, didn't we? And I was at six. Yeah. I think about seven now. Yeah, I'm going to say after the... After the start, the first four games where we lost, where One. we are now, 10th in the table, where it could have been higher with a couple of better results, I'd say about a, yeah, about a seven. 
I'd, I'd give it a seven. Yeah, I think a seven's fair. Let's I hope when we do this again at the end of the season, we're saying it's a ten and we're like finishing fifth or sixth or. If we finish fifth and we finish league, above Tottenham. FA something. Cup victory. Like a minor miracle. <laughs> I will go around Tottenham on our bus and go around there with a megaphone. Look, I know it's not going to happen, but as I said before, right, I'm going to defend myself on that Tottenham prediction. I predicted that thinking that they was going to go into their stadium. Yes. It's not really fair that they didn't, is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, let's go to an advert. Blame the stadium. Ain't nobody, Shaka Khan. Um, okay, cup, I think we should go into now. There's a little, uh, there's a little bit of uh, um, controversy with the FA Cup because a lot of games didn't didn't um, kick off at, at three o'clock, Ryan. They they kicked off at five thirty and twelve thirty, and a lot of the people were saying it's because of the um, of the foreign TV market. And look, for me, the game. Look, I've, I've spoke about this in, in in quite detail over the last few years, but. TV companies at the moment are, they're getting up my nose to be quite honest with you. They, um, they cha- they're constantly changing games. Nobody can book anything. Nobody can stay anywhere. Nobody can book an hotel. Nobody can book a train. You're going into the, the you know, the, the eye end of nowhere on a Monday night, Tuesday night and things like that because they want to put it on the TV. Um, but now they're starting to mess with the FA Cup. I was very surprised that I didn't see any games on the BBC this week. I never even knew that they'd lost the rights to them. No, there was games on the BBC. I never saw any. Yeah, there was uh, the uh, Leicester game. It's, they they put it between BT Sport and uh, BBC Leicester versus Woking. It always it used to be terrestrial TV. All FA Cup games used to be terrestrial BT TV. BT Sport bought the rights for it last <laughs> season, maybe the season before last. Um, so they split it between the two. I'm, I'm, I'm just, it upsets me, right? It yeah, I mean, well, me. it's, let's talk about the the first game in the weekend. Tottenham, you know, they had to travel up to Tranmere on a Friday night, seven foot forty five kick off, wherever it was. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was worth the trip in the end, seven nil victory. Oh, f- to be honest with you, mate, I, f- I think the results are neither here nor there. Like whether, th- they, whether they went there and won, whether they went there and lost, people up there can't get trains home. I think, the, yeah, that was the main talking point. There was no trains, which is it's terrible, isn't it? Well, I'll, look, how do you resolve this? How do you resolve this sort of thing? If they want to move them for TV, I don't think they should be moving them for TV. Just start showing some games what you want to show at, at, at three o'clock. Obviously, they look at the games in the FA Cup third and fourth round. They look for tyres that are going to be upsets. Uh, but I'm asking, yeah. Last season, I mean, Tottenham went to Newport and they nearly lost. They yeah. was 1-0 down, they equalised, they went back to Wembley and then won. Um but I think with the FA Cup, when they do the TV, especially on a Friday night and the late games, they need to look around at the games and think, right, who's not that far from each other? Even if it's like an hour drive, two hour drive max. But they don't. They just pick it. They want Tottenham on the telly. And as I said, look, Tottenham, I, I, I'm not going to say that was unbelievable. They just done a professional job. Do you think they have a right to do that, TV companies? They pay a lot of money into this yeah, game. Yeah, they can, yeah. I mean, don't get me... Look, what you've got to remember is... So let's just talk about the Tottenham game. Tottenham okay. have got a, a worldwide fan base. So a lot of the fans that can't obviously get to the games, they want to see their team. Um, but that's... I mean, I wouldn't support... Let's say, for instance, I decided to go and support Boca Juniors, right? I'm a mad Boca Juniors fan. Mad, mad Boca Juniors fan. Now, I wouldn't turn around and start demanding that they put... Boca Juniors on the telly at a time suit me. What's their manager's name? Who, Boca Juniors? Yeah. Uh, you just said you was a mad, mad fan. You don't <laughs> even know their, you don't even know no, their no, manager. No. You don't know <laughs> Captain Quackle. <laughs> Quackle Quack on one front from <laughs> Buenos Aires. No, look, look. Um, just say, like, we can't keep on serving up football to suit the people that aren't there. You know what I mean? Like, the, the people that go to football seem to be thought of secondly. You know what I mean? And I know there's more watching around the world, and I know there's fans from New York and and Mexico and and Spain and and whatever. You know what I mean? I know that there's all these fans around the world, and you know, but that that should be the danger of of supporting a club that isn't in your country. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, look, I don't, I just don't understand. I just don't understand it. I know it helps the brands. It helps the 
um, money, it helps the TV companies. The only people who don't help is the is the fans that travel to the games. Yeah, I mean, which I think <laughs> I know that they're the minority. But they're the people that need to be thought of first. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's not that. I mean, Tranmere's up north, so if you're a Tottenham fan, you'd have either had to take a whole day off work or a half day off work, the minimum. Um, and you've got there's no trains going up there, so you have to drive. Um, or if there's if you go up there and you want to go out on the drink after, then you've got to book a hotel. Which is look, we do it week in week out when we go away. But I think you're right on a Friday night. I mean, even when you look at the Arsenal game, Arsenal versus Blackpool was probably the furthest you could have got two got game two yeah. teams away from each other in that round, and they put that on half past five on a Saturday. Yeah, Saturday is obviously not as bad because, but they've still got to get back, and it's a long old trek to Blackpool. Yeah, I mean we done it last week when we went away to Burnley. That was five hours there, five hours back. Yeah, now we left at what quarter past six in the morning we didn't get home till like 10 and that was a two o'clock kickoff and we bloody lost yeah and we lost 2-0 but yeah it, but <laughs> but you know should there be sort of like <coughs> I, don't, I, I don't know who governs this I don't know who governs it it's the if, FA isn't it because the FA if there's no trains then exclude that game just say no they can't well, go the that far when because there's no they, public transport yeah when they pick this game the, the trains might have been running so I, I'm not sure in the what's happened if there was strikes or whatever but all I know is there was a lot of Tottenham fans that were upset and they took their banners up there which were confiscated off them because um, obviously people from BT Sport working the work was working there and they've seen them so they've got the stewards taken them down and, and the banners were bang on they're ruining they're ruining football like people do it about Sky Sports I know it's the other day there was a game where the fans were singing Sky Sports I can't say the rest, yeah. but you Sky Sports done a crowd noise over I, it, yeah, and drained, I saw that, drained yeah. that singing out. So they know they're aware of it. Look, Sky's been good for football because this brought some world class players to this country, world class players, and it is beamed around the world. I mean, I've been to America a few times. You've been yourself. You know, you go into any bar there, you can watch the Premier League. Three o'clock kickoff on a Saturday over here. You go in there at seven o'clock in the morning, yeah. and you're watching it in a pub. It's good because it, you've got to realise that the Premier League is the biggest and best league in the world, and it is a worldwide brand. But I understand what you're saying. It's not fair on. on see, the I, I don't see it like that because I, I had an argument on Twitter last night with a couple of people. Twenty six years, the Premier League is twenty six coming up twenty seven years old. Twenty seven years old this year. Um, football has been around for 170 years and football has existed and leagues have existed a lot longer before them people you know what what it is and I, and I said this yesterday um, all the, this money benefits it doesn't benefit you or me because at the end of the day if they wanted to benefit the people that go to the crowd, if they wanted to do do something to help the people in the crowd, they wouldn't make 70, 80, 90 pound tickets because there was a study come out um, the day before yesterday saying 11 of the 20 Premier League clubs would have still been in profit if they didn't have a single fan through their turnstile. That's how much money they get from from um, people watching at home, from, from the Sky TV money and all that sort of stuff. They don't need the fans. So... When there's all this money coming in, I mean, we'll get onto the West Ham mascot fiasco in a second because that's another thing that gets up my nose. Um, when they 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 sort of brought this money in, if it was sort of like, you know what? <coughs> yeah, we might have seven o'clock kickoffs on a Monday night, but your ticket's only going to cost you a tenner to go up there, and I know thirty pounds to go away. Is, is quite reasonable but your ticket's going to cost you a tenner there's no need to overcharge people to come into these stadiums no matter £30 a maximum you'll pay to come in any football stadium in the country people might understand it but when you're laying out 90 quid for a ticket and then another 100 quid if, like, I know a lot of people that travel down to West Ham that don't live in the area and, and can't get home because of trains and, and all that sort of stuff 90 quid for an hotel and then another 90 quid to put in your car or, or, or petrol tank or whatever it ends up being a very expensive day it's not just you Gan some people are bringing their kids and and all that sort of stuff yeah football is an expensive day out um, but it shouldn't be Ryan it sh no it shouldn't it, be it should be enjoyed by the masses it's a working class sport yeah I remember going to West Ham when I was young and I'm I'm 36 
just turned 36 years old. It cost me three quid to get in. Yeah, That's I remember, affordable. I remember being a junior amateur and paying five pound <coughs> to watch Man United at home, to watch Chelsea, Tottenham. That was all it was, it was a fibre. But, you know, and I, I'm sorry, but <laughs> you look at the London Stadium in that FA Cup game, mate. Could hear a pin drop at times. Small minor pockets of fans singing. The rest of them, they ain't got a clue what's going on. They ain't got a clue what's going on. The Burry fans, all credit to them. I know there was a lot of fighting and all that stuff. Loud as anything. They made the atmosphere in that stadium that's that, that day. Um, West Ham fans, a lot of the um, working class people, been priced out of football, been driven away from football by not only greedy corporations like Sky TV and BT Sport, but also the clubs themselves. The clubs themselves don't want the, the, the working class there anymore. It's quite evident because they price people out of tickets. Yeah, I mean, Nick. Nick's just uh, texting again. And uh, we know we know Nick personally, and he, he obviously is a massive West Ham fan, uh, runs crossedhammers.com, and he comes from Burnley. So every game is like an away game for him. Yeah. You know, he has to come... And his poor missus, he's dragged her up there, so she has to do it as yeah, well now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so... And what, this, I've got to read this. This is maybe not going, still going on about your card, is he? No, nah, okay. this is from Razors again. I'll tell you, this is his name, Razors, because okay. he's playing. Football started with a cabbage being kicked between two villages, and there was their beacon was the goalpost. That's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah, I, I know that. I know that. I know. But yeah, it, it's. It's I had a, to read that again because I thought he said the bacon. But it, the it, you part. know, it, it has been it has been drawn away from the masses. It's been drawn away from the working class. It, we created the game, and the rich have taken it. And and that's the that's the problem with the Premier League. And I'm go, I'm going to say players, agents, owners, managers, a uh, coaching staff, coaching staff. You can't really complain about. They get probably a normal day's wage, but they're all making millions and millions of pounds millions and millions of pounds and we're still paying through the nose yeah when you say about the players and and this is one this has always been the sort of argument that i can stick up for the players here is that i know people say about right the police the nurses the firefighters should all be played a lot more which i agree of course they should but it's not the players fault when they get offered this money if no. my boss come in to me and said Ryan, I'm going to give you 30 grand a week extra. I'm not going to say, nah, you're all right, mate. No, I'll, of course uh, it's not. I'm, happy, course it's I'm not. happy with what, I, what but I've got. But some players do demand it. Look at Wayne Rooney. He's held Man United to ransom twice. Players do demand it sometimes, but... because, it, it, But they only demand it, why? Because they know that money's there. Yeah. They know the money's there. And that just pushes the cost on to us. It's why a replica shirt, cause you can't get any less for 65 What would happen then if, the, if FIFA made a worldwide rule that the maximum... Every player has to earn twenty five grand a week. That's it. Don't matter what level you are. Don't no, matter a, a how good wage you are. cap. Yeah, a wage cap. Everyone gets twenty five grand a week. Be brilliant. Could you imagine? Like, let's think of a player here. Glenn Murray on the same wages as <laughs> Messi. It, no, it, you no. know, it's um, look, it's I about brands and 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 these players, uh, these clubs, sorry, spend this money on players like Man United spent hundred million on, on Pogba because they know within a month they're going to earn that back through shirt sales in Asia. That's what they do. Juventus. Let's be honest, they only wanted Ronaldo for shirt sales. Yeah, of course. The, the, there is a lot of the business that goes into it, mate. But that's what I'm saying. The innocence and 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 everything else of football and 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 the good old days when. You know, clubs treated fans with a bit of respect because they was reliant on them coming through the gates to pay the bills when, you know, footballers weren't worth more than the chairman. Yeah. He, it, you know, it, it's, it, that they were the days that <laughs> made football great. I think... When, when you could watch um, a football match on terrestrial TV for free with the licence fee that you already pay... And you ain't got to have four subscriptions to make sure you yeah. can watch Premier League football. I mean, I don't know many clubs that um, that do it. I know West Ham done it on Saturday, kids for a quid. And I know I'm not a big fan of it because you get you, your regulars don't turn up and things like that. But it was nice to see families going to the football on Saturday. Little kids, you could tell it was their first time. How excited they were because one time in our life, we've all been in that situation when you first go into a football stadium and see your team play. Yeah. And it's a memory that... Uh, 
will stick with them for the rest of their life. And it's it's nice to see the family. And they, I mean, some of the women didn't look like they wanted to be there. To be fair, their husbands dragged them to the football. It, it was bloody cold, but though. No, yeah, it was freezing. But no, the kids, I see loads of kids going to run into the stadium. You know, it was that excitement. And mm. that is a good thing. And that is one good thing I do like about West Ham. They, they obviously can't do it for the big games, the Category A games. But when you play teams like um, Burnley at home, Watford at home, the, the, the lesser teams, should I say, I don't want to be disrespectful there, but you know what I mean. They're not the, the top, the top yeah. six clubs. Yeah. Then they should be able to do like football for a fiver for the kids, family packages. But I've, I've, look, West Ham do. Somebody brought this up to me yesterday. They do a two hundred and eighty nine pound season ticket, which is I think is fantastic. Um, they do ninety nine pound season. Well, they used to do ninety nine pound season tickets for children, which I think is fantastic. We're the most affordable in football, but I don't. I, I don't personally believe why that that is a decision they've made themselves I think it's a decision they've made as part of the agreement to go into the Olympic Stadium but we'll leave that there but they do also charge £700 Ryan for a mascot place at West Ham which yeah which is, is ridiculous it's ridiculous and I know someone that's done it uh, one of my mates kids done it and you don't even get a kit you've got to bring your own kit I know mate I know so what is the £700 for do you know what it entails must go in the Christmas pot for the players to there's have a ten, drink. The, there's 10 mascots, 11 mascots. On well, 12 if you include the one the that referee. comes out with a referee. But they can't charge them. No, but the thing is... Imagine getting to a mascot, on a mascot day, you got you look around, you see Felipe Anderson, yeah. Issa Diop, Fabianski, and out of it, and they go, you've got to go out with John Moss. Yeah. <laughs> As you get that excitement, like, <laughs> oh, you got, you're going to walk out with Mark Noble, and uh, you go to the front, and they go, no, you got to walk out with Roger East. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but, yeah, I mean, some of the clubs, I mean, there's a lot of clubs that don't even charge, which I suppose could charge Arsenal, United, Chelsea. But that's, sh- that, that, why not? Why not? Why do they charge? It, it's such... Like, the thing is, mate... No, seven, they don't charge. No, no, no. Uh, that, but this is what I'm saying. Right? Why charge? Why do West Ham charge oh, yeah, yeah. £700? It is such a minuscule amount of money. In the grand scheme of things, an hot dog costs you six quid in there. If you go outside to one of the... One of the um, t- 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 what's names? The, the, the stalls Kiosk. outside. You get fish and chips. It costs you 15 quid. And things like that. You know what I mean? To charge seven hundred pounds for the chance to walk into a changing room and hold a player's hand, and you don't even get a a, a blinking kit with it. No. What, what's even worse? <coughs> to see to see Chris Skull doing beat the battock. Yeah. Outside, do you know no. what I mean? Bournemouth charge 185 quid and you don't even get a match ticket with it. Yeah, well, so, so you can walk the team, man, and they say, right, you've got to go now. <laughs> See you later, and the but kids are all why, crying. But why charge why? What is, the, what, I mean, what is it for? What is the money for? What is it used for? £7,700 or £8,500 in the grand scheme of things, every week, it adds up to 150 grand at the end of the year. Surely, with the prices they get, with the money that comes in from Sky Sports, they can give that back to the community. Don't get me wrong. Pick 11 like, kids that deserve to be there that have done, you know, gone through hardships in their life or or done something amazing or, or you know what I mean? They can pick random kids that are, you know, just been good at school. Community, whatever. From, yeah. yeah. Community kids. Why can't they just give that back? Why do they have to charge seven? I want to know. I, I really... Do you know what? I'm going to ring up West Ham tomorrow. I'm going to ask them. The best thing, like... If it was if they was charging seven hundred quid, and I'm not saying it's right, but you got four tickets, like two for you, like the fan, you don't even get you get one ticket with that. Yeah, I know. I so know. the mum and dad both can't go. I've, and we they we made give a, away a couple of mascot yeah, places. Yeah, and they made a they whole before, yeah. they made a whole fuss about you for the day. They give you a kit with your name on it. You meet the players, even if Saint City like. You go for a meal after the game. They they sort you out like that. Then you could sort. It's still a lot of money, but you could thought right. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. But yeah, you don't even get a kit. I've, I mean, I've seen kids come out with like kits from like three seasons ago. Yeah, it's not their fault. You know what I mean? But maybe the parents like they can't afford the new kit. No, so how, not. how nice would it be to you've paid seven hundred quid and you get a brand spanking new kit with your name on the back well, signed? If I paid seven hundred quid to send my boy out there, I want all three kits. And the goalkeeper's kit. Mate, if I paid 700 quid for my daughter's guy, I wouldn't take Mark Noble home with me. Yeah, exactly. I think it's an absolute disgrace. I think it really needs... Like, some of the things that they, they, they put fans through, and this is what my point is talking about this. 
they just think nothing of fans. They think nothing of us because they don't need us anymore. They don't need us coming through them turnstiles to, to keep the electric on. They don't need us coming through the turnstiles to make sure the tea ladies and the, the, the kit men get paid. We, we're nothing anymore. And they just treat us with total disrespect. And there, there's got to be a, a stand. There's got to be a stand. And there's got to be, um, you know, all, all this... Who's the people that are meant to be representing us? W Woosa? <laughs> yeah, Woosa no, or whatever. You've got, yeah, you've got Woosa and you've and, got and, the, and they uh, make statements. The and they make statements, Gam. We don't agree with this. We'll do something about it then. You're meant to be part of the... Um, they did once, didn't they? have a, a board meeting in a garden centre or something. No, they've they done something like they, they voted that the, the, the board no had no confidence. In the balls, no four of them. No, yeah, like, and they've done it in a garden centre. I mean... You're meant to be part of all these big organisations, these, you know, these FFP. And look, I know it's not easy to deal with football clubs. We've been in them positions and it's, it's not easy to negotiate with them. But if you want to be part of this and you want to charge people memberships, what well, are you going to charge people a pound to turn around and say, I ain't got no confidence in David Sullivan? What's the, what's the point? If you're part of them, them big organisations, rally together and do something about it. If, you, if that's what your, your, your game is, do it. Yeah, no, I agree. Do it. But um, yeah, I mean, look, let's get let's get back on track. Let's talk about the FA Cup. Maybe let's my get, mate Nick can can get, bring it up in, a bit. in his. Uh, yeah, Nick's 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 uh, there for us for the uh, supporters meetings. Um, I'm about, I know he wouldn't hold his tongue. That's for sure. But yeah, the FA Cup. Um, obviously, not many shocks was there. weren't really great tires, was there? I know Leicester going out yesterday. Uh, the, the Leicester one was a to, big one. Yeah, that was a that was a big Good one. Good game as well. That they yeah. missed the penalty, didn't they? Oh, we've got to talk about VAR as well. Yeah, we're getting we're getting to that. Portsmouth beating Norwich. Uh, I think Barnet as well. I can't remember who they beat, but they they beat Sheffield United. Yeah, Sheffield United, which was uh, they'll be getting a court next week and blowing oh, twenty million quid off of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, blame Tevez, blame yeah. Tevez. Yeah, that's Fulham, blame Tevez. Fulham losing at home to Oldham was a uh, well was a massive shock. Well, that's but that's the game I wanted to talk about. Did you see the decision in that game? Did you see the highlights of that game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see the Kearney penalty? Yep. He went down. Look, I watched that replay, and I can show you. I got it in my phone. My friend of mine um, taped it. The Kearney penalty, I watched it 50 times, yeah? He never touched no, him. No, he never touched him. He, he grazed the top of his foot. Yeah. They sent it to VAR, yeah? They sent it to VAR, and the VAR come back. It was a penalty. Yeah. That's the that's the that's the thing with VAR. I mean, there was a decision on on uh, the Burnley's game on Saturday. Did you see that one? No, I didn't. I tell you, <laughs> it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Burnley got a penalty. The bloke, I can't remember who was taking it now, was literally standing there getting ready to take it. As he jogged up to take it, the referee stopped him, went like that, the VAR, and give offside. So instead of it like him just saying wait. I'm going to look at it. He, he let, let the geezer get the up, penalty. jog up to it, and went, nope, <laughs> offside. It was just like, stupid decisions like that is what makes you, you think, I don't want VAR. Yeah. VAR is a good tool if it's if it's used properly. Yeah, but I don't want him teasing me, right? I don't no, want but that, he proper teased that geezer because he was like, I'm going to score here, and then like, bang. He went, nope. <laughs> offside. Offside, and he gave offside, which to be fair, it was offside, but, but he shouldn't take... It shouldn't take two minutes to look at a decision when we can look back on a replay straight away and see it. The the World Cup was it and miss with VAR, I think. Anyway, a lot of good things come out of VAR. A few bad decisions. And, and like I sat there at times at, uh, <laughs> watching the World Cup. France had, a, had say, could, could have put them out at the beginning against Australia. Would have, would have ended up putting them out. Had a VAR decision given their way, which I was thinking, you know what? That that was never a penalty, and and you know VAR give it as a penalty. But that on Saturday is going to put all the VAR haters. But what I don't understand about VAR as well is they don't use it every game. They pick and choose what games. They pick and choose when to use it. Like why? Just say right. The start of the season, VAR every game, every ground done. Yeah. Why pick and choose? Because then you think like. Like, say, for instance... If There's going to be conspiracy Yeah, say if Watford were playing Burnley at home and something happened and Watford got relegated, but then Liverpool, they Liverpool played Tottenham and they, they used it there. And why use it for that and not for a game like yeah. that? It's just one of them things. But, yeah, there wasn't... I mean, Man City won 7-0, which was... You expect, really, didn't you? Standard. Standard. Um, 
Millwall. Millwall beat Hull 2-1. Uh, they were 1-0 down, come back. Two great goals as well. And this is the tie that every West Ham fan wants. <laughs> I've seen it on Twitter. Um, I'm not sure if I want it, right? To be fair, look, I, I'd like the game just for the rivalry, like uh, to play your rivals. If you want to play, you, you listen. We do a charitable thing every few years. We get relegated to go down and play these because they're not going to come up and play us. Well, so, they're, they're quite hopeful this season. No, they're about fourth from bottom. Well, they're, I've seen fans on Twitter go, "We're going up, we're going up, we're going to yeah. start beating everyone now." Don't know where they're going, but no, but it's it's nice to to play your rivals in a cup, but it comes with the um, the extras, doesn't it? The one that it just all be talking about is the... But look, I've seen Millwall fans say they want West Ham. West Ham want Millwall. Neil Harris come out yesterday after his press conference and says, I want West Ham. You know we're both going to end up with Northern teams or it's not going to happen. Well, we're, I think they're number two and we're number 22. So... Ooh, all the twos? Yeah. Make of that or what you want. Why, we, why, are we, why are we number two? I don't know. No, Millwall, Millwall are number two. We're number 22. Why are they number two? I don't know. Put some on. Disgrace. Jazz right on time there. Um, what else we got? I'm trying to open a suite. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? You right there? Yeah. No, um, I've got a couple of texts coming here. Um, yeah, people just saying they can't wait for the draw and that, which... Uh, yeah, no, it's going to be good. Realistically, who do you think we're going to get? I think we're just going to get a Premier League team away from home. I really do. We all I'm want the lower boys. league teams. I'd like, do you know what? I'd, I'd like a, I'd like a, I'd like Barnet or someone like that. Yeah, do you know you what? Know, like, I wouldn't mind them, especially away. Yeah, I'd like um, a club like that. They still got Edgar Davids playing from. Nah, number one, Edgar Davids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah it's well, going to be decent, man. I think, I think it's going to be a couple of. Look, I'm guessing here, but I think it's going to be a big couple of big draws. Well, yeah, you got tonight. Wolves. Wolves versus Liverpool tonight, so Premier League team will be out. It's a uh, yeah. This what should we talk about? Should we talk about the Premier League? The Premier League's back this weekend. Mm. Um, early kickoff is West Ham versus Arsenal. And preview this mm. or do it at the end. We'll do it at the end. All right. So West Ham play Arsenal. And because I had a mouthful of twigs, but go on. Then we have got Brighton versus Liverpool. Uh, that'd be a difficult game for Liverpool. Obviously, you know what? coming off the back of that defeat, they've suffered their first defeat of the season. Now. I was just about to say that they they suffered the defeat. It's over the title race right up again between the two. Um, they got to bounce back, Liverpool. They're still in front. They've still got a little four point lead, and I think Man City will lose again this season. But Brighton's a tough place to go, especially yeah. when when you just been beat. Brighton have got some good results against big teams over the past couple of seasons. Couple against Arsenal. Liverpool. Uh, Man United, I yeah. remember them beating them. I think they beat them this season as well. Yeah, I think they did. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe if it'd be interesting if Liverpool get a draw there and then Man City get a win, it goes down to a point. Look, uh, this is this is where they're going to start to. Um, this is where they're going to start to to find out what Liverpool made of because you know you're flying high, and look in that first that was a. Look, that Man City Liverpool game was a great game of football to watch. It was a pure game of football. Do you know what I mean? There was you know what? I was just about. It was so refreshing to see two teams, two top teams, just going at it. Just going at Both it. Both going no for the dirtiness, win. No dirtiness. No, nothing like that. You know what I mean? They're just pure football. It Usually, was, them games end up like nil nil or something like yeah, that. Yeah, boring. If Mourinho was involved, it would have been a nil nil, definitely. But yeah, they was just going at each other. A purest game of football. <laughs> the debate of rage on whether it was over the line or not but it definitely wasn't for me um, that got to change the dynamic of the did game you see, <laughs> did you see that tweet that someone reckon, reckons that he's a Liverpool fan the shadow he reckons his uncle works for Sky and the ball was over the line but they told him to delete it <laughs> 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 they're so desperate aren't they <laughs> but what about that thing that I sent the other day it's mad isn't it that Liverpool it. Liverpool played Chelsea at Anfield on exactly the same game day, thirty-four, yeah, as when Gerard slipped. Yeah, so yeah, but, look, I, I still think Liverpool. It's out of Liverpool City, but I just, I just confident City now will go on a run, and I, I can see Liverpool dropping a few points now. Mm. Maybe not losing a lot, but drawing a lot. Yeah, um, yeah, a couple it, of draws, and that that be it. Burnley versus Fulham. Um, Cardiff play Huddersfield. Palace play Watford. Leicester Southampton and the late kickoff is Chelsea versus Newcastle. 
Not really Tottenham. glamorous ties now, no, not really. It, right? no. It's like a boring weekend. But the, the betting man would be, uh, be happy with him, I think. There's a couple of just bankers there, aren't there? But, yeah. um, Sunday, yeah. Everton versus Bournemouth, and then Tottenham versus Man United. This yeah. is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's real first test, really, isn't it? He's had a... He's come in, he's won five out of five, or six out of six, where he is, including the cup. Um... He hasn't played teams that, that he's played teams that Man United should be beating. It was it was a very strategic sacking, I think. That 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 sacking because they I think they looked at the teams coming up. They knew they weren't going to get a big manager straight away. They thought, well, can we what can we do? Bring back an ex hero and give him a, a, a well, nice run of games. Well, I've seen he, he's brought in um, a lot of the old Alex Ferguson culture. Like he took him away to Dubai mm. and said, like. Do what you want, basically. You went out for meals with them, drinking, and maybe the players might look at that and think, "Yeah, that's good." And what happens if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has a really good season, maybe sneaks into the top four? What can you do then? You can't sack it'll be, him. He'll be number two to Pochettino. A bit like what Di Matteo done at Chelsea. I know what you mean. Yeah, but look, it's all. When you get a big club like that, and they've got really good players, man, you know, and they shouldn't be in the position they're in now. But you always get that sort of that little sort of bounce back ability because you know the the players have got ability. That it's not like they're lacking in ability. They've got Pogba, who's on his day one of the best midfielders in the country. They've got Sanchez, who, that we know on his day is one of the best wingers in the country. Lukaku. Lukaku, on his day. You know, he's a 20, 20, 20, 25 goal season man. Lingard. Um, problem they've got is defence. But, you know, it, they've got the players to do it. It's not like they're sitting there battling relegation or whatever. <sighs> Mourinho just lost the changing room. Mourinho was never going to get anything more out of them players. People had lost confidence in him. I think his attitude just upsets people, especially the modern day footballer. I don't think there's there's any more room. It's, you know, the the people that he learnt under now. When you think of like the Bobby Robsons and the people that he was underneath at Barcelona, they're not. Um, you know, them them sort of managers are, 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 are gone now, aren't they? It's, it's more about they're more you know, trying to connect more coaches, with the players. Yeah, tactical coaches. Now, yeah, yeah. Managers. You, you know, you need to really sort of sidestep around these players and things like that. Now they they they're not. You know, then they're, they're not the old school sort of player, is there? Um, but at the end of the day, it was a strategical second. They knew they was going to get the, the you know the best out of the players over the next four games. This one will be a tough test, Tottenham. And um, but you know, I, I'm going to say Man United win this one. It's I think just, they've got enough firepower there. Yeah, I mean, it's just flashed up there. Salah's on the Salah's on the bench for <coughs> Liverpool tonight. Oh, really? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, no. As I said, it, it's going to be a tough test for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But yeah, I, I, I can see them sneaking this one. Yeah, exactly. Right, I, just, yeah. I just think they're. Um, it'd be tough though. It'd be tough because Tottenham. You know, they're still in the title race yeah. and, they're, and they're at home as well. Look, apart from that loss against Watford, that, you know, when you're at the top, you can't afford to lose one game. And they've only lost one game. You know what I mean? Like That was Wolves, wasn't it? Wolves. Yeah, but Wolves, 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 sorry, Wolves, Wolves tore them apart that day. <coughs> they did, mate. They did. And, you know, they got a little bit, I think they got a little bit ahead of themselves, Tottenham. But that's it. One loss can really Yeah, but let's be honest. I know you say... They've been magnificent, if, if, right? we was West, if that was West Ham, we'll all be getting... We get excited when we win three games in a row. Yeah. Imagine being up there thinking... They're only, what, five points off the top. It only takes Liverpool and City to slip up and they win two games mm. and they're, they're top. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Um, I just, I think, then again, they've done this well without any signings. They're now in January. Who says they don't go and get a couple of new signings, freshen it up a bit? I don't think they can. No, they probably can't, but the one thing they have got is a Harry Kane who's going to score goals left, right and centre all the, day long. The, the, the thing about Tottenham is, like, when you look at the, the no signings, they've had really bad injuries to some players, yeah? But they never seem to lose their main player. They never seem to lose Kane. They never seem to lose Ali. They never seem to lose Ericsson. And not only that, uh, Harry Kane at the moment, we're talking about him, but Son has been unbelievable. I think he's got 12 goals in his last 13 starts. He goes away soon. Yeah, he goes away to the Asia Cup, which is going to be a massive loss. That's why Spurs might go out and bring in maybe a loan signing I've, to replace look, him. Look, I've said this for a long time, mate. He's could have been worse. He could have been in the army. It, yeah, he could have been away for two years. It, it was it was down to a game of football, wasn't it? 
Yeah. If they, 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 if they beat someone, he could stay, and if they lost, he had to go off to the army for two years. But yeah. magnificent form. I've said this for a long time. He's the most underrated player, I think, in the Premier League. Yeah, massively, massively. He's probably worth about, what, 35, 40 million now? Maybe even a little bit more. Oh, I think about 100 million, right? I think you've got to be looking at 100, 100 million. million for Son? Yeah, I do. No, not 100 million. They're talking about 35, 40 million pounds for this kid that ain't even played two games for Chelsea. Yeah, Adore, I M- Mikel Adore. Oh, Son maybe 60 at a push, but not 100 million. I reckon 100 million. He's that good. I think he's that good. That's well, look. That's my opinion. I, uh, yeah. It, look, he's worth what he's worth to someone. If someone come in for a bid, if someone, if Man City wanted him, they'd pay hundred million pound for him. I think that's what well, that's probably what it'd take to get away from Tottenham. I think honestly, they're talking. The money's gone crazy in the game. That Adoy, I forget. I forget his name now. But it's saying Adoy. F- they want forty. That Bayern Munich come in with a bid for 20, 30 and Chelsea said now we want 40. They're even offered him the number 10 shirt today. Yeah. Robin's number. 40 million pounds for a kid that, how many games he played for Chelsea? Five? Yeah. Well, to be fair, I mean, the first time I see him was Saturday um, when they played Nottingham Forest and he did look a really good player. So he's obviously been scouted for a long time. Chelsea don't want to lose him. Uh, I mean, Chelsea have just gone out and paid 50 million for that, um, the American kid. Yeah, who's, who they've loaned back to Borussia yeah. Dortmund? So Pianic, yeah, it's yeah. crazy in the moment. Not it seems Pianic. like young players are going for silly money now. But yeah, speaking of Wolves, I mean they go to Man City on Monday night, and uh, yeah. look, you expect now Man City to go on a little run. But then we said that, and they lost to Palace at home. <laughs> that's that's football. That's why football, we love. Yeah, that's why we love the football. But it, uh, it'd, be, it'd be an interesting race at the end of the season. That's for sure. Yeah, that's definitely. Sure. But. Nice West Ham West Ham play Arsenal on Saturday 12.30 kick off um, I was speaking to me mate in work today about this he's obviously a massive Arsenal fan and I can't call this one because it, the, we're both so inconsistent this could be either a 2-0 win for West Ham or Arsenal could turn up and put five past us like they've done before Yeah, it's so it's one of them I, games I, 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 look <coughs> sorry <laughs> we 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 need we need the win because we've got some tough games coming up. They've um, got some absolutely brilliant players. Arsenal. Well, Bamiyang is class. Lacazette is class. Um, but apart from them, Ozil maybe on his day. Mkhitaryan, Mkhitaryan on Iwobi. his day. I think that we. Iwobi's got to, awful. No, I he's think, not that. Bad. Where you got to target terrible. Arsenal is at the back because at the moment their back four is all over the place. Um, but they'll be saying the same about us. Yeah, but saying that, we have got a decent defence. We can see a lot of goals, but when I've watched Arsenal at the back, and especially in the last few games, and I think their supporters will tell you this. I mean, you've only got to watch Arsenal fan TV. They tell you it all the time. They, um, yeah, they're um, they're all over the place at the back. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, uh, the, the thing is, mate, that that's the thing that fills me with confidence. I'm confident going into this game. Not overly confident. It's still Arsenal at the end of the day. They're still fifth place in the league or whatever they are but they are all over the place they they had a lovely run of games at the beginning of the season they didn't lose for something like 18 19 games they've lost a couple now and drawn a couple that they really should have won um there are now mark's just texting he's put 100 million for son give us some of them drugs mate <laughs> <laughs> look mate I, I'm, d- I'm just giving you my opinion look if, if you don't think he's worth 100 million you don't think he's worth 100 million i think he's worth 100 million pounds i think he's underrated but listen um what 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 was i saying oh the the, the, the there is exploits there and we've got the players to exploit their weaknesses oh yeah definitely uh, i mean arnie will bully that back four but we just need to make sure that we don't panic in that first 10 minutes you get the crowd's going to be up for it both sets of fans it's a london derby early game um yeah we've just got to get in there make it loud the players have got to be confident declan rice be a massive game for him um nasri whether he's going to start or not it'd be good to see him start because he'd be up for that uh, he'd well, be up for it i think you should start you got, you got, you got you snodgrass start. Who could start? We've got we've got some good options. I mean, it's going to be an interesting game. It's going to be. A, I, I can't call it. I can't because I, I, I until I see the starting lineups. Well, you got that question mark over and out of it, whether it'd be fit or not. Yeah, we need the win because a win win would be massive because we've got two tough away games coming up. We've got Bournemouth and Wolves coming up, and then obviously we've got Liverpool at home. So our next two home games is Arsenal and Liverpool. So. 
Yeah, easy six points. We've seen it down the years, easy. though, and we, we've got quite a good record against the top four when we have early kickoffs. We've beat Liverpool, we've beat we we drew with Chelsea, we've we beat United. Brilliant, we ain't had a brilliant time against Liverpool uh, over the last few years. They've put four past us, I think, in the last three visits. Yeah. I think so. That could be a bit of a, uh, isn't, you know, that could be a good idea. But, no, Arsenal, I, I, I fancy us against Arsenal. I think we've got the players there to, you know, at least give them a game. So the last one was seven points behind Tottenham now. So if Tottenham win and it's ten points, that's a massive gap. Yeah, massive. as they say, the divide in North London is getting bigger. Look, the, uh, Tottenham are in a great, great position. Whether they stay in that great position over the next few years, I don't know. Um, Arsenal, you know, they're in transition, really, aren't they? Arsenal, they got since since Wenger left. Again, you got the same See, sort of thing. Emery's got to implement his well, style. This is, this and, is and something I was going to say. I mean, I see uh, a couple of the, the boys on the Arsenal fan TV, uh, Claude, I think it was, he was saying about Emery, he's not a world-class, top-class manager. Oh, when you're at 22 man. years at Arsenal, this geezer ain't even had 22 <laughs> months. He's won, he went, what he did he go? 20, 22 games. He went 20 games unbeaten. You know, honestly, I don't understand. What do they... What, I, I think look, Arsenal fan TV, they're a funny breed of people, man. Honestly, I like Rob... I, I, mean, I know Rob quite well but you know some of the fans are going I don't know and people say we're deluded with what we expect and we don't yeah. expect much but when you look at um, when you look at what they expect from these teams especially when they're trying to when they've got a new manager what what do they want what do they want off the bat they, obviously to win titles it yeah. looks like well they haven't, when was the last time they won a title? 2004. Mm. Invincible. Long time, yeah. I think that looking at the way Emery set up this season, give it two or three years, Arsenal will be back in the title race. I've got no doubt about that, especially if they can keep a Bommy Hang and Lacazette fit and plan together regularly. I've got no doubt about that. He just needs to sort out that back four um, and build on that team. But you've got to give a manager a chance. He can't just, people just can't just. Expect him to come in and they're twenty he's gonna, games. And he's going to win the league yeah, in the first 20, season. It's not going to happen. Twenty games and they're turning on him already. But yeah, I mean, I'm, just I'm just before we go, you're talking about hundred million pound. I've just seen some Manchester United have opened talks with Barcelona to sign their Brazilian attacking midfielder Felipe Coutinho. Really, ex Liverpool. <sighs> How much they they, they offer him for him? Hundred million. Hundred million pound. Hundred million, and also Real Madrid have begun a move to try to sign. Christian Eriksen from Tottenham for a hundred million, so it looks like a hundred million is the asking price at the moment. Well, you know you're all laughing at me, but I'll tell you what, but, yeah, imagine Coutinho going to Man United. It'd be berated, mate. I don't think it'd be. It'd yeah, but what a great signing that'd be from United. But I, I can't see that one happening. I mean, looking through Look, some of been, these they've rumors, been, they've been talking about Gareth Bale for the last five years. Yeah, that's never well. He's always he's injured now, isn't he? I think his career sort of over. Yeah, he's uh, he's had a, had, a yeah, he had a bad spell. He's won three Champions Leagues, scored two winning finals, and but yeah, I mean another transfer that looks like it's going to happen. Wolves have uh, finalised a deal to sign that Tammy Abraham from Chelsea on loan. Yeah, he's actually on loan at Villa. Villa at yeah, yeah. I was looking at that today. And for me. I don't know why I'd, I know I understand the attraction of playing the Premier League but if you're not going to start every week stay at Villa he scored 12 I think it's 10 Six, or 16 goals he yeah. scored it's, he might as well go down there learn his trade in the Championship because the Championship is a good level to well, learn your well, trade well Sar Sarri came out and said that he wants him to have more top level um, you know top level experience but Let's be honest, Chelsea, over the last few years, they've gone into seasons with one, two strikers. They've still got Batshuayi on their books, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, uh, we've been linked with. We've been linked with a million and one times. But um, let's be honest, he's going to go to Wolves, same as Lukaku. Yeah? He's going to go to Wolves. He's going to... He scored 16 goals in championships, getting good guns. He's going to go to Wolves. He's going to struggle a little bit to, to adapt to the level. By the time he struggles and adapts to the level, the season will be over and he won't have scored that many goals. He ain't going to end up starting for... Um, he's not going to end up starting for Chelsea. He's not going to end up breaking into Chelsea's teams. I just think, yeah, stay in the championship. Get some confidence. Get some more goals. You know, he could have, he could have ended up the goals, uh, the season a 30-goal striker. He's not going to do that at Wolves, I don't think. No, definitely not. But... Um 
Yeah, I mean, that's it for rumours. There's going to be loads more coming up over the next couple of weeks. Um, Fabregas obviously played his last game for Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, Leaves, he goes to uh, Monaco, I think he's going to. Good where, servant for English football. Yeah, he'll link up with uh, Thierry Henry. So, yeah, that's it, mate. That is it. That's it for the... Uh, the 90 minutes of total football show. 90 minutes total football show up. Thank you very much for joining us on this 90 minutes of total yeah, football. Yeah, thank you to everyone that's uh, texted in as well. And, yeah. uh, it's been good interacting today. Well, hopefully we'll have the uh, Facebook Live set up. Um, yeah. Next, next time week. we come in. I hope it ain't on live now because we're both sitting here naked. Yeah, I know. I've only got my uh, <laughs> bow tie on. But yeah, uh, thank you very much for joining us for this edition of Total Football Show. My name's been Nicky Hawkins. That's been Ryan Archer. Um, one thing left to say, mate. Bonjour. Don't forget your boots. Good night. Yeah.